Hello, everyone, and welcome to yet another talk. So big differences in how well we know and understand each other can be very frustrating. Understanding others more than they understand us can be a very lonely place to be in. We can easily feel isolated and alone even if we're surrounded by people. That is, if we understand others much more than they understand us. Now, this disparity between individual levels of understanding goes both ways, of course. Understanding others much more, as well as less than the other way around, can both be a source of conflict. When we say that understanding others much more than they do us can be a very lonely place to be in, we're by no means saying that the reverse of understanding others much less than, than they do us is any easier or less important. It's just that for reasons we'll discuss shortly, I feel people that are highly sensitive or HSPs generally more often experiences, experience difficulties with the former than with the latter. Most of the time, the main source of conflict, pain, and suffering is understanding others too well. So today we'll focus on that aspect or that half of interpersonal knowledge asymmetries, let, let's call them, which is just fancy for how well person A understands person B when compared to how well B understands A. So we said of the two extremes, HSPs more often experience issues that stem from understanding others better than others understand them. So how come? Well, hopefully this doesn't come off as uh, excessive praise of HSPs or even boasting because believe me, there are many downsides to being sensitive uh, as well. But truth be told, I do think HSPs are more emotionally aware than people that aren't um, as sensitive. So their natural empathy and curiosity makes them pay attention to and consider others' emotions, moods, motivations, wishes, and so on quite often. We can probably even talk of this as a default with many highly sensitive people. So generally speaking, they pay a lot of attention to others. And by a lot, we mean attention in absolute terms, even though we can't really measure or quantify it, of course. Anyway, the point we're trying to make is that as a default, they pay so much attention to others in absolute terms that relatively, when compared to others, it's usually simply more. So many of the qualities of highly sensitive people make them relational seismographs. Um, we may even think of these relational skills, of this sensitivity to all things human and interpersonal, as at the very core of the trait as a whole. So, taking all we've said so far into consideration, it's only to be expected that the highly sensitive can often find themselves in such asymmetric interpersonal dynamics, and perhaps not just dynamics, but full-fledged relationships as well. So. So now let's have a look at what this dynamic feels from the inside. What's it like to experience this asymmetry in the first person? Well, the short and the long of it is that it can make us feel like aliens, as not really part of the human world. Understanding others and predicting their behavior better than the other way around can really make us experience a profound feeling of alienation and isolation. It really can make us feel like aliens as just somehow not quite fully part of the human world. It's as if we're watching people through a one-way mirror. We can see them interacting with each other, we take in, we take in their body language, we hear and, and understand what they're, uh, we hear and, and understand what they're talking about. In short, we're observing human interpersonal relations, but we're not quite living them. By not being understood, or by feeling as if we're just not on the same wavelength, we can feel like um, invisible observers of the game of life rather than participants, so to speak. Or, or to use uh, another analogy, it's sort of like we can, we can touch others, but when they try to touch us, their hand passes right through us, as if we don't quite fully exist, as if we are a hologram or a ghost. Uh, it can feel as if we're speaking another language, or if we're from a different uh, culture, or perhaps even as if we belong to a different species, or are from a different planet altogether. The alien metaphor is admittedly pretty extreme, but I think it's quite fitting. So, 
now that we've explained or at least tried to, ex try to explain what it feels like from the inside, the question we turn to next is why can this asymmetry and how well two people know and understand each other be so damn painful? And um, I think the, the crux of the matter is that if others don't under understand us, we tend to feel invisible or sort of not real. Now, we don't mean not real as in actual depersonalization or derealization, but rather as a persistent diffuse doubt, an uncomfortable uncertainty, a nagging suspicion in the back of our minds that our version of reality is less accurate or valid than that of others. Um, since um, one of the most important things is that uh, as humans, we need to be seen. And it's just, it's just an imperative. Being seen essentially consists of number one, being understood, plus number two, being shown that we are understood. That means having our experience of reality mirrored back to us verbally as well as non-verbally so that, so that we can see ourselves in the mirror of a fellow human being's words and body language. Seeing our reflection reinforces our feeling of existence. Um, we know we're not crazy. We know our thoughts, emotions, and sensations are at least somewhat relatable. We feel a reassuring connection and perhaps even a sense of belonging. However, in order for this to take place, in order for others to be able to show us that they understand our experience, they first have to understand it, of course. And so naturally the problem is that if they don't understand it, uh, understand us, if they can't put themselves in our shoes, if they don't know what to make of our thoughts, emotions, sensations, and so on, we can start questioning them ourselves. Reality is flimsy and existential uncertainty and doubt can spread like wildfire. So if, um, if most of the people around me understand each other and seem to be on the same wavelength, but they so often fail to understand me, then the problem has to lie with me, right? If others can't make sense of my thoughts, emotions, and sensations, then maybe there's no sense to be made there. People with low self-esteem are particularly prone to start thinking this way. Now, we definitely don't mean to say that uh, whenever we feel like the odd one out, we must always be right and everyone else uh, wrong. And I mean, that's just narcissism. We just mean to say that we shouldn't resort to the other extreme of feeling like there has to be something wrong with us either. There are plenty of human aliens out there. The key is, of course, to find them and form meaningful connections with but a few symmetric relations or relationships. If not just a single one, we can feel pretty normal in dozens of others, asymmetric ones, and, e and perhaps even find pleasure in them. So thank you for watching uh, or uh, listening to yet another talk. And uh, as always, I hope you're all doing well. And um, yeah, maybe see you in the next one. So enjoy.